What's up, guys? Welcome to Visualization. Nestor Adrian Sen here again. Quick question: Do you deal with performance issues in Power BI? If so, this tutorial is definitely for you, my friend. Today, I'm going to show you how to summarize rows by using the Group By feature in Power BI Desktop, and by doing so, we will improve performance in our Power BI reports. So, are you ready? Let's do this. For today's tutorial, I have two different points here. The first one, we will learn more about the benefits of creating aggregations with Group By. And the second point here, we're gonna have a case where we're gonna put everything into practice, my friends. So now let's go to the first point. So what are the benefits of creating aggregations with Group By? Like it says right here, Every time that we aggregate data, we summarize and present it at a higher grain or level. So the main three benefits that we're seeing here are the following. Better query performance if we are dealing with a large amount of data. So this makes sense because we are basically reducing the number of rows, right? With these aggregations. So the other benefit here is that we will be able to speed up the refresh process, which makes sense as well. And finally, we will be able to reduce and maintain the size of our model. Really important concepts. Now, guys, let's go to the case. Two questions here, two tasks, okay? So the first one, we need to summarize premium collected shipping cost, claim cost at a claim year category and also product claim level. So here, guys, we're going to use this powerful feature within Power BI Desktop called Power Query, okay? And the next task that we have here is the following. Use performance analyzer to assess performance between a non-aggregated table and also an aggregated table. So we are saying that if we aggregated information, we will have a better performance, right? So we need to make sure that that statement is true. And that's why we need to use the performance analyzer. Before we use the performance analyzer, there is something to be aware of here as well. So we need to make sure that we clear the visual cache and also the data engine cache. And also we can achieve this by using DAX Studio. Let's go to Power BI Desktop. Guys, before we solve this question, let's go over these two tables that we have. So we have the fact table here called premium, right? We have columns here and we also have the DAX measures table. And for this particular case, we have the measure here called total premium, which is basically the sum of every single premium amount, right? What we need to do is solve the question, right? So remember, if we go back to the premium before we solve the question, and let's go to data here, let's select premium. So how many rows do we have here? So we have about 1,100 rows, right? This is just as reference, okay? So now what we need to do is let's open a new Power BI report, okay? It's loading. Let's close this. So what we need to do is we need to import data from Excel. Click right here, premium. I'm gonna share with you guys this file as well. Open, and that's when we need to start working, okay? Let's select the table here, and this is the table. So before we hit load, we need to transform data. Let's do that. So this new window pops up and this is the popular feature within Power BI Desktop called Power Query Editor, okay? So let's hit home here and here it is, group by. All right, so let's, let's do this guys. Let's hit advance here because we will be aggregating and grouping multiple columns here, okay? So the first one, if you guys remember, we need to make sure that we include claim year. Let's add another one, and this should be category. The other one, this should be product claim, right? And now we need to add aggregations. So the first one, the first column, we're gonna call it total premium, okay? The operation here, this should be sum, and the column, this should be a numeric column. And for this particular case, this is premium. All right, so let's add the other one here. This is shipping, right? So total shipping cost here.
So we are good to go, I think. That's right. So let's hit OK. And boom, guys, there it is. So here we have claim year, category, product claim, total premium, total shipping cost, total claim cost. Perfect. What we need to do now is close and apply. It's loading. There you go. So we can even change the name here if we want. So how about if we call it premium better performance, right? BF. There you go. Let's create a new table here to store our measures. Okay. Enter data. And this is a good practice. This is just a bonus for you guys. So what we need to do next here is we need to create a measure here. Right click, new measure, and we're going to call this hotel premium better performance to differentiate it from the, the first one. Okay. Equal here, I'll enter. So we need to use some here as well. And we need to reference the new table. Enter, and there you go. Then we can even customize this a little bit better if we want zero decimals, okay? So why am I doing this? Because I wanna compare this new strategy because we just aggregated columns and rows here, right? So we wanna compare this with the previous one. So let's match the, the same visuals here, okay? So we are selecting here the cluster bar chart. And then right here, we need to select product claim. And then from here, we need to select total premium. All right, so let's make a couple of changes here if we want. There you go. We can even add right here a card if we want. So what we're doing now is basically trying to match what we have in the previous report, right? Uh, let's do this right here, perfect. And this is just a card, okay? All right. So then we can save it if we want, right? Save as, group by new table. There you go, let's hit enter, boom. Okay, perfect. So now, like I said before, we wanna compare the previous report with this new report, right? So before we do the comparison real quick here, let's go to data here. So now let's take a look at the number of rows that we have here. So guys, you can see we have only 61 rows, right? And in the previous report, we had about 1,100 rows. So this means that we have less space here, so which is great. So now what we need to do here is to use the performance analyzer, right? Which is under view performance analyzer. But before we do that, we need to clear the cache, right? So how do we do that? We need to use DAX Studio, all right? So let's open DAX Studio real quick. So this is DAX Studio. I'm gonna share with you guys a link here as well to this software, to this tool, so you can download it. Uh, this is a free tool. So what we need to do next here is let's use connect here. And let's select this one right here. And we have two options, right? The first option is the original table. And then the other option is the, the new table. So let's connect this to the original table, the first table that we had, right? The first report. All right. So let's hit connect. And the next step here is to use this option, clear cache. Boom. So let's minimize this. And now let's open the previous report. It's right here. Let's go to view here. And now, because we already clear cache, right? So we are good to go to use the performance analyzer. So let's use that and let's see what happens. Start recording here, refresh visuals, boom. And we can rearrange this a little bit better if we want. So sort by total time and also descending. There you go. So keep this in mind, right? This visual on the left. So the processing time was about 225 milliseconds, right? And then for the card right here, it was about 158 milliseconds. So let's keep this in mind. And now let's go to DAX Studio again. 
All right, so this is DAX Studio. What we need to do next is we need to connect this tool to the new table, which is this one right here. Let's connect that. Perfect. And now we need to use this tool called Clear Cache. Let's do that. So now let's minimize this. And this is the new report, right? So let's go to view here and then performance analyzer. And now let's start recording and let's hit refresh visuals and let's see what happens. So let's rearrange this as well. And this should be descending, right? There you go, guys. So if you remember the old report, the report that has all rows, right? About 1,100 rows. The processing time was higher compared to the new report where we have only 61 rows. So that means that the aggregation statement, right? That it improves performance. It works, my friends. Check this out. So let's let's put this on the left right there. And then let's put this right here on the right. Right? Just to compare right here. So this is a new table, right? And let's minimize this one right here. And this is the original table where we have every single row there. See right there, total premium, total premium there. On the left, we had only 185 milliseconds and on the right, we had about 225 milliseconds. For the card, we had on the left, the new table, 105. And then on the right, we had about 158. So the result here is that if we perform aggregations, we can definitely improve performance. So this is what happens, my friends. So guys, what do you think? Do you find this helpful? Do you think this is useful? Let me know. Put your thoughts, your ideas, your comments below. So I would like to hear from you, okay? All right, so now let's go back to our presentation. Guys, that was it. I hope you found this helpful. If so, as always, please give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, leave your comments below, and of course, don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss anything. Thank you guys and see you in my next tutorial.